Speedy and Sam podcast, episode 21. Welcome to a very special episode. This will be our first episode on YouTube. So be sure to go check us out on YouTube, CD and Sam. It's the same name. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff that the sellers <laughs> tell you to do at the start of every episode. And um, as always, we'll also be on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Be sure to leave a five-star review and comment there as well. Help us get the CD and Sam podcast out there and listen to by more viewers. And let's just, with that uh, kind of cheesy intro out of the way, let's get into... Uh, I think it was a cheesy intro, but it was necessary. It was it's necessary. So, yeah. yeah. Um, we got MLB postseason, which kicked their... Well, how would you say that? Because, like, you know how... Yeah, you know how I say, I say kick off? Say kicked off or tipped yeah. off. I don't know. Okay, well, anyways, first pitch was last Friday uh, with the wild card round. Yeah. Saw the... Mariners, Guardians, Padres, and the Phillies all get series wins to advance the next round. Yeah. And right now we're in the DS. I, I want to get right into it. And who do you think right now has the best chance to make it out of each league? I mean, us being biased Yankees fans, it's hard to say the Astros. But I think me and you are – we're biased Yankees fans, but at the same time we're real Yankees fans. Like we keep it 100 yeah, and we both know that Astros are probably the better baseball team. Yeah, so, I mean, if everything goes according to plan, I'm gonna say Dodgers and Astros World Series again. Okay, yeah, I I say this um, sometimes. I, I'm a fan, but not an idiot. And if you think yeah. that the Yankees are better than the Astros this year, you're an idiot because <laughs> in every way the Astros are better, and. I don't know if I've said it on this podcast, but I think the Astros will win the World Series this year, whether that's going to be against probably the Braves, uh, but maybe the Dodgers as well. Um, so that that's kind of my overview take. Yeah, the Braves. Um, the Braves. Yeah, uh, probably, yes, I'd have the Braves. I know they're down 1-0 to the Phillies right now, um, but I think if they get past the Phillies, I would I don't know, them. man. They got a uh, Wheeler on the bump tonight. Do have Wheeler. It's, an interesting, it's an interesting game tonight for sure. Uh, and then just the, the upsets in the wild card round were crazy. Yeah. I think I, I tried to like pick them before I missed every single one of them. Really? Yeah. I would have picked every team that lost. I would have only gotten the, uh, I would have only gotten the, uh, Padres over the Mets. Right. You called Padres over Mets. Yeah. See, I thought the Mets would win the NL. Uh, Oh, and I would have gotten Phillies over Cardinals. Really? So you yeah. got the NL right. No, I got nothing nothing right. Um also a quick quick side note. Um so you know how like the game was postponed a little bit for the uh Braves Phillies? Yeah, yeah, it's going on. Um the Braves are given like a fifty percent like half off for like all concessions. I thought that was a pretty cool gesture. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah, it is. Um I think I'd probably rather have the Braves make it out of the NL than the than the Padres, so I'm rooting for the Braves in that um, league. Yeah. And then, of course, Yankees in the AL. But, okay, here, here, I got another question here. What was more surprising, the Phillies beating the Cardinals or the Mariners beating the Blue Jays? Mariners beating the Blue Jays. I don't know why, but the, the Phillies have – the Phillies have good hitters on their team. The Phillies have Castellanos. The Phillies have Reese Hoskins. Phillies have Bryce Harper, Kyle Schwarber. I mean, Kyle Schwarber. Yeah. I could keep going, but yeah. the um the Mariners, I mean, who's their guy? You know what Julio I mean? Julio Rodriguez has had a great year, but if your best hitter is a rookie, I don't know that, that's how good you are. Like, they have a perennial MVP in Bryce Harper. Yeah, I think when I looked at – when I was just, like, thinking about the Cardinals playing the Phillies because I'm, like, a, I'm like a low-key Cardinals fan a little bit. I was like, yeah, the Cardinals, they're going to breeze through this team. Phillies aren't that good. And then I watched game one, and I was like, they got some dudes. I mean, their top, what, like six hitters is um, is those four guys that you mentioned, as well as Alec Bohm and Gene Segura, who are very good as well. And Phillies then, are a good hitting team. I'll tell you yeah, that. they are. And then I know their bullpen is pretty bad, but um, – Yeah, that's true. Aaron Nola and Zach Wheeler are great. That's uh, a great one-two punch for sure. So they they're certainly dangerous, and I wasn't wasn't expecting them to beat the Cardinals, but they looked like the better team 
the Phillies are a team that's built for those three game series. Yeah, definitely. And they're kind of built for the playoffs. They have a lot of hitters that can get hot. Yeah. Um, and like, I don't know about their pitching for like a longer series, but yeah. Yeah, we'll see. With the Mariners, I, I'll I'll have my segment later on making fun of a um team franchise or whatever. Um the, the Blue Jays are not mine, but they're close to being it for blowing a seven run lead in an elimination game. Because yeah. that was that was bad. That was astronomical. Yeah. And to do it to that lineup too, it was just like surprising. I don't know. Yeah. Because I definitely thought the Blue Jays were maybe the third team in the AL this year? I mean, Blue Jays are kind of like the Phillies in some sense. Because, I mean, the Blue Jays have that once you punch Alec Manoa and uh, Gosman, but they also have some other guys. Um, and, I mean, the Blue Jays just have a ton of good hitters. Vladdy, Bo, Teoscar. Well, I can had, keep going. They had, um, by a lot of standards, they had the top offense in the AL this year. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Um. But, yeah, so seeing them go was surprising, especially at home. That's a great uh, home ballpark Yeah, for them. Um, you got any other any other uh, MLB takes? Um, I think the Phillies will make it a close series with the Braves. I mean, you already saw they took game one. But I think the Braves are going to win that series. But, no, like I said, I think the Dodgers are still the best team in the NL and the – Astros are the best team in the AL, although I want the Yankees to come out. Yeah, I would pick the Dodgers, but I've been burned too many times by picking the Dodgers, so I'm going away from them for now. Yeah. Uh, before we get to, like, NBA awards, I was saying I have my, my thing where I roast someone because um, this will be the only NFL thing today. This week's winner of dude that I roast is new Broncos coach, Nathaniel Hackett, give it up for the guy. Nathaniel Hackett has led his team to an opening <laughs> two and three record despite trading basically the franchise for Russell Wilson and surrounding him with pieces like Javante Williams, Jerry Judy, and Cortland Sutton. Wait, they despite, traded uh they traded for us? Yeah, they traded like three first round draft picks. Let me continue. And despite all this, he continues to lead the most incompetent offense in football. Let him know, baby. They managed to score nine points against the Colts. And it's not only that they're bad, it's that Nathaniel Hackett has no idea what he's doing. <laughs> like in week one, they get the ball four minutes left, full timeouts, and you can't get into field goal range, not because you couldn't get there, but because of the clock. You had four minutes in all timeouts in the NFL, and you, and couldn't, the clock. Coach, and you couldn't coach your team to get 30 yards. And then this week, Late in the game, chance to go up six points in a game that, mind you, nobody scored a touchdown. He's got a chance to go up six points late in the fourth quarter. He elects to go for it, doesn't get it, gets to overtime, goes for it again on fourth down, and doesn't get it to lose the game. Nathaniel Hackett has absolutely no idea how to run an offense, and he should be fired. Dude, Vic wasn't even that bad. Wait, what are you saying? Vic. Vic Fangio. They're all coach. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. No, I mean, like, he was conservative, but, like... I mean, I, I'm thinking Vic over Nathaniel Hackett. And yeah, two. Hack, he's been, Hackett has been terrible. Someone needs to take a Hackett to Nathaniel Hackett because he has sucked. <laughs> okay, that, that's my that's my, um, that's my my um spiel because I like the Broncos this year, and I still like the Broncos as a team, but now I just have no faith in them winning until they fire the guy that got carried by Aaron Rodgers, and now it's an NFL head coach. There, there you go. Thank you. There's this week's segment. Tune in next week. Yeah. Um, okay, so moving on to NBA award predictions. Me and Good Connor boss. got – did we get none of these right last year? I did not get anything right. No. Yeah, I don't think I don't think I got anything right either. Oh, boy, let me so, see if it's still in my notes. I think oh, I have Sam, in my notes. We got to do like a one-year anniversary podcast. Yeah, that'll be coming out um, – Soon. That'll be soon. Yeah, that'll be two weekends from now, the one-year anniversary of the podcast, which will probably be, like, either episode 22 or 23, which is cool. Yeah. We've averaged, like, two podcasts from, uh, per month. Which is solid. solid. Even though they've been very uh, 
I don't know if sporadical is a word, but that's that's what's spontaneous. Coming on right now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Do, do you have them in your notes? Because I don't I don't know if I have mine. Yeah, I got, I got them. Okay. So, anyways, um, you want to just kick off MVP? Tip off random MVP? NBA player. Nick Stauskas. <laughs> w man. <laughs> that, that, that's, that's something new we're doing here. Just random <laughs> NBA players at random times. All right. So we Get start off. off with coach of the year. Coach of the year. Okay. Coach of the year. I think this might be the easiest pick. And it's a homer pick, but I think Willie Green will win NBA Coach of the Year this season. Yes, sir. The Pelicans won 36 games last year, and this year they're poised to win close to 50. So you're winning, you're gonna be winning potentially 15 more games than you did last season, as well as um the NBA loving the Pelicans, in my yeah, opinion. And if you don't like Willie Green, you're just a bona fide hater. Exactly. Give me, give me Willie Green. This is the only pick that I would give you like advice to bet on because I, I think you could probably get pretty good odds to bet on Willie Green. But that, that's my, that's my coach of the year prediction. Yeah, I mean, yeah, me too. I got Willie Green. I mean, some like you could say it's a homer pick, right? We're Pelicans fans, but it's not a ridiculous take. Like, no, it's not. Theoretically speaking. Yeah, uh, I don't really know who else would win it this year. I mean, Bickerstaff's up there. Yeah, bigger staff could get it, definitely. But like, he kind of got a lot of praise last year. Yeah, uh, he didn't. He didn't win it last year, though. Huh? No, who got it? Was it? Shoot, who got it? Was it Monty Williams finally? Uh, uh, I thought Monty Williams got it the year before. I think Monty might have got it. Well, it might have been Monty. I don't get why they give it to Tom Thibodeau that one year. That oh, with the yeah, that was. They should have given it to Monty that year. Yeah. Okay, right, guys, you, you want to go with the MVP or you got you got other plans here? Uh, let's, like, work our way up. So, I say we go most improved right now. Most improved. I have um, a crazy most, of, like, way out of the order. Okay, okay. But, so, I'll let you go first. You go first. Um, or unless you want me to, because if you don't have Okay. Yourself. I'm going to go with Tyrese Halliburton. That might be like a I, – I, I'm going to go with Tyrese Halliburton because he's going to – Tyrese, up, he's going to come off the bench? I mean, he plays for the Pacers, so no. Oh, um, oh, wait, we're doing most – You're thinking improved. of Tyrese Max? My bad. No, 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 I thought we were doing oh, six-man. Yeah, we're doing most improved. Um, I'm tripping. My bad. No, um, Halliburton no. is going to put up yeah. ridiculous numbers this year. Um With the Pacers, expect for this guy to average around 25 points per game. Like, this is going to be – I don't know if you remember this, but, like, when Colin Sexton averaged 25 points per game on a terrible Cavs team, yeah, that this is going to be that, and I got I got Halliburton. Uh, don't, don't be comparing uh, Tyrese to Colin Sexton. <laughs> Tyrese is cool. I like Tyrese. Tyrese. Oh, um, All right, what's your – you're out of the blue. All right, so I was high on this guy coming out of college, and I'm expecting a big leap from James Book and I – James Book. I mean, <laughs> hear me out. Hear me out. Hear me okay, out. Okay. I just like to say one thing. You realize the average NBA fan has no clue who James Book Knight is. Hear me out, bro. <laughs> hear me out. The right. Hornets are going to suck this year. Yeah. You know that. I know that. Everyone knows that. And it looks like LaMelo might be out for a little bit. Yeah. You LaMelo's going to be out. I was just about to say that. LaMelo sprained his ankle. Yeah. It's James Book. It's James Book Knight's backcourt with Terry. <laughs> Dude, let me cook. That is, I, Connor. I'll give you twenty dollars if if James Book Knight wins uh, Sixth Man of the Year. I, I'll give you I'll give you all the credit for that one. James Book Knight, baby, twenty twenty three. Oh, I mean, <laughs> I I could see it. It's just like to say that a guy that James Book Knight will win an award is uh, it's just it's one of the more shocking takes that's been given on this this podcast. It is. It is, dude. Oh, wow. I swear. I was like, I had no idea who Book Knight was at the night of the draft. I looked up some college or some of his highlights. I was like, damn, this dude was cold. Yeah. And so it's just stuck. I mean, he hasn't really done anything. I watched him play. There was like one or two games last year where I watched him play and he looked good. But yeah, that's it's a it's a hot take for sure. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure it's a hot take. Um, let's do rookie of the year. 
But let's give – I mean, we both have Paolo, I'm going to guess. Okay, yeah. Let's give like, secondary. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, secondary. Let me look up this draft class real quick, just so I like got it down. NBA draft. So yeah, we both have Paulo. That's a pretty easy pick, just because he's the only guy that's going to be the first option on a team this year. Yeah. Um, but are we expecting twenty plus from Paulo this year? I'd expect twenty, like around. I was there. expected anywhere from 18, 18 yeah. to twenty one. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's about where I'd expect him to be. He's just gonna get so much volume. Yeah. Okay. So gosh, rookie of the year. So obviously it's not Chet because he got hurt. I don't think it'll be Jabari Smith. I'm gonna go, you know, I'm 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 high up on the uh the award value of this terrible team. Give me Benedict Matherin as a dark yes, horse sir. uh dark horse rookie of the year. Just because he's also going to get so much volume. Yeah, I mean, um, I don't know if you know this, but I was like a huge mather and ambassador. Oh, I'm aware. I was a huge mather and ambassador coming out of college. I mean, the way he defends, uh, he's a big physical guard. Uh, I wouldn't say he's a playmaking his go to, but I mean, he can play make a little bit, but he can score the pill. Yeah. So. I'm taking Matherin as well. Uh, he'll be given at least some of the shots in Indiana. I mean, they're not trying to do anything. They're tanking. But, I yeah. mean, give me Matherin, baby. Yeah, I, I think it, I think the, the Pacers are a good uh, award team this year. <laughs> um, but what, what do you got next year? I got Depoy. Depoy. Ooh. See, last year, I think I went for, like, the easy pick. In you were Rudy Bay, last year. Which, like, he probably almost won again. Um, hmm. I'm taking the same guy I took last year. You know what, Bam? Yeah. I really like Bam. Bam is really underrated on the defensive end, I think. No, I mean, uh, the way Bam guards one through five, it's, exactly. it's impeccable, bro. He's, like, one of two or three guys in the league that can guard one through five. I'm not going to be – like, I'm going to be there when Bam wins rookie of the year. Or, not rookie of the year. Deep boy. I'm going to be there. I rode with Bam. This is uh, – I'm looking – I'm just looking at the odds right now. You can get – um, they're giving Herb Jones a decent shot at winning rookie of the year this year. That's what I like to see. They give Deep Herb boy. Jones the same chance of winning Deep boy as Kawhi Leonard. <laughs> what? That, that's respect right there. Respect. And okay. 2K still has Herb Jones's – perimeter defense at like 78 i know yeah two two k's for don't get me started on 2k game right. sucks i'm gonna go with I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with the time lord for uh wt i think he's gonna get i think he's gonna get more minutes this year his shot blocking ability is amazing his lateral quickness is like it's really only him and miles turner that block shots like that and um he could he could really Rudy. Rudy. like two and a half to three blocks this year yeah no, but Rudy doesn't really like get up like that. You know what I mean? Because Robert Williams. I mean, Rudy kind of just stands there. Just... Yeah, he just stands there and puts his hands up. He's yeah, huge. So I'm gonna go with Robert Williams, Time Lord. Yeah. Um. No, I mean, like I said, I'm going with Bam because there's Bam because Jimmy's Jimmy's getting up there in age. I think Jimmy's gonna take his fair share of time off in the regular season. I mean, me and you both could probably agree that the Heat are going to make the playoffs. They're going to be, like, a comfortable seed. And those games, Jimmy isn't playing. I mean, it's Bam's team. I mean, obviously not just from an offensive perspective. But I mean, they're going to be cha- – teams are going to be challenging him at the rim. Um, and he's up for the task for sure. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. The, the one thing – I we've probably had this conversation, like, five times that Bam needs to be more aggressive on offense. And hopefully with, like – he'll get some more opportunities this year because I do think that you're going to see some load management a little bit from Jimmy Butler yeah. this season. Right, yeah, so like, got... That's what I'm saying. Like, I'll talk about this for the MVP, but I guess uh, that's what we're, we're on right now. Huh? No, we got a uh, six-man still. I forgot that. Oh, one. yeah, six-man. Six man. You, you got to pick first. Or you oh, yeah. To um, so I'm going to go Jordan Poole, six-man. Yeah, that's um, that's an easy pick. Jordan Poole was already one of the best six men in the year last year, and this year he's on a contract year. And um, 
Tyler Hero just got the bag, so he's probably going to slow down a little bit. That's just how these things go. NBA, yeah. baby. Yeah. Um, gosh, the money that, that Tyler Hero is making is just nuts. It's crazy how they just threw that money at Duncan Robinson. They can still throw that type And they of can money still, at. yeah. Well, it's a big market, but yeah. Um, and I yeah, think it, Jordan Poole is also going to be, like you said, on even time, not only because yeah. of the contract, but Draymond Dink. <laughs> yeah, like uh, J- Jordan Poole is going to be a menace this year on and off the court. I yes, think. for sure. Um, he, he's going to be be very eager to show uh, show the Warriors why they should pay him. All right, yeah. I got I got an impromptu que- Im- impromptu question here. Should the Warriors pay twenty five million a year to Draymond Green or Jordan Poole? What like what's the length of the contract? Let's say it's three years. Jordan Poole. Jordan Poole. I'm going to go with Draymond. I think Draymond was probably the second most important player on the team last year. You can make a case for Wiggins. But just look at the way the I team I think Draymond played. was more important. Yeah. Just look at the way the team played with and without Draymond. I know he's a player that's memed on so heavily, like, in recent – like years just because of the triple singles and stuff but <laughs> like he's the orchestrator of that offense he's what makes everything go um to me yeah I mean, Steph Curry's amazing I mean, but there's both sides to the argument yeah well like, I think the Warriors are so concerned with win now so that yeah. that I think they should pay I mean but eventually that 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 narrative is going to be no more because I mean Draymond's going to be out of here Clay and Steph you know yeah they're all getting up there they are I, I think like just I might have said this before, but the Warriors is just like, let's get one more year out of these guys. And then the next year is like, hey, let's get one more year out of these guys. That's, and then yeah, let's just keep doing that's that exactly what it's been. and see how far we can go. That's a great way to put it. Yeah. Okay. So getting into um, most valuable player, most valuable player. Um, let's just get this out of the way. They're not going to give it to Jokic for a third straight time. He's saying it now. It's not, it, there is There's no, no shot. Way. That they There's give no Jokic one. three straight MVPs. The dude would have to go if he go if he went out there and averaged 35, 8, and 8, they would not give it to him. And the Nuggets were the first seed. Yeah, I still don't think they would give it to him. No. Oh, all right. You want to go? Sure, I'll go. Um, I think I've said this maybe last episode, but uh John Morant is gonna win MVP this year. He he should be at least in your top three for MVP this season with Jaron Jackson Jr. being out, as well as he had an all-NBA season last year. He's only entering his fourth year into the league. He's just going to keep getting better, and now he's going to have more volume. Bam is your local jobber at ambassador. I am. Wait, wait, wait. One sec. Let me get Let me get some. Oh, Lord. Mind you, Sam is still in his school clothes. John Morant, baby. This year, MVP. This guy. Right that's here. a that's a pretty cool jersey. I'll give it to you. What are we talking about? Uh, I just have a question. Why are you still in your school clothes, man? Dude, I honestly I don't even change out of my school clothes anymore until I like take a shower. I'm too lazy. Respect, I, I, respect. I get home. I just kind of like lay around for a while and study and I'm just like it because they're so uncomfortable too is the thing but I'm just still here I don't know man I feel I feel like they're kind of that was that was a good one but that was it that was a no no that that counted that counted. <laughs> um I mean they're not uncomfortable I don't know they're like they're just like heavy you know what I mean I mean yeah but what are you doing just sitting there oh, I'm too lazy man because like I'm like really terrible when it comes to laundry. I don't feel like folding that crap. Like folding laundry is just something that like you have to do for the rest of your life. And it's annoying every time. Just like doing the dishes. Yep, exactly. And like vacuuming. vacuuming. Yeah, it's just like, and making your bed. It's just like, paying bills. Some, it's like something that's annoying, but you just got to do it. And so I hate IRS. folding laundry. Yes. All right. <laughs> IRS. Enough, enough. Right. Um, let's get to that. Or my turn for MVP yeah. now. Um, I'm going to go Luka Doncic. I think this is his year. But, I mean, enough said about Luka. 
Y'all know how great Luke is. Y'all know he's an MVP candidate. Hear me out on this one. Pandemic P is on his revenge tour. Pandemic P? Similar to the situation with Bam, Kawhi's going to be taking his rest. He's going to be yeah. off a lot this year. If Kawhi plays more than 50 games this year, it will shock me. That's what I'm saying. And Clippers, you know it, I know it. Clippers are going to be a really good team in the West. And Paul George is going to lead them. Paul George will lead them. Paul so George. Dark Horse candidate, Paul George. Brandon. Okay, I like that. And he's been a guy that's been in MVP talks in his career. Um, the Clippers are going to be really dangerous this year because similar to the Pelicans, it's a team that was really good and got grit, better. Really gritty, really well coached, had great chemistry uh, on the court. And now they're Are we saying Tyron Lue was a great head coach? Last year, yeah. <laughs> T. Lou, uh, what, T. O. Lou. Um or ATO, wait, what the, what the hell do they call him? It's like, whatever. It's like out of the time at Lou, whatever. Um, but, uh, yeah, and now you add this year a top 15 player in Kawhi Leonard. It's very similar to the Pelicans, except you're getting Kawhi Leonard. You're getting a two-time finals MVP. Yeah. Um, you got, you got anything else here? Um, no. I think that pretty much wraps it up. That's it. I mean, um, uh, Yankees play tomorrow. We're all going to be watching it. Go Yanks, baby. Go Yanks, baby. Nah, I'm just waiting to lose to the Astros again. Nestor shoved it. And then just – um. Hey, man, I think it. we'll take at least two. Yeah, at least one from that. At least one. If, well, if we don't take at least one. I think we'll take two. I think we'll take and two. And then once we lose to the Astros, just, like, stay out of my way. You know what I mean? Yeah, ain't nobody safe steer, at that steer point. Steer clear. <laughs> it, it, my, my hatred for the Astros cannot be – uh. No, I was talking to words. I was talking to Dalton about this, and it's like a pretty obvious thing to say, but it's like we kind of take it for granted. Like me, you, Gianni, Jake, and Dalton all like the most hated teams in baseball. Yeah, it, it's something that I'm. Dalton's an Astros fan. Yeah. If you could have, I'm interested, together. like to know would like if you're let's just say you're a fan of a random team like the Milwaukee Brewers, and I, I'm convinced all Brewers fans are NPCs. They don't actually exist. But if you were a fan of the Milwaukee Brewers, would you rather have the Yankees win the World Series or the Astros win the World Series this year? I think it'd be, I think it'd be a close, like, uh, I don't know, man. I think most people would say the Yankees. Yeah. Yeah, I think so, because everyone hates the Astros. Oh, there's one. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, we're tied up. He looks like he's going to, he's going to steal a point in the, in the closing minutes. <laughs> um, but yeah, we're gonna lose to the Astros. It's how all things were were meant to be in Yankee Land this year. Yeah, but I mean, realistically, I don't know, man. I feel like the Yankees could do it. I feel like we could do it. If okay, so this is what this is my theory I came up with. If Wandy Peralta, Clay Holmes, Nestor Cortez, or not? Okay, let me get started. If well, Clay Holmes, Wandy Peralta, Garrett Cole, Aaron Judge, and Anthony Rizzo all have incredible postseasons, they can win it all. Because Anthony Rizzo and Aaron Judge are the only two reliable hitters that you can count on in that lineup. At I wouldn't season. even call Rizzo reliable, man. I mean, he comes he comes up with big hits, though. He does. He, gets he on does, base. yeah. And then – He gets on base. Yeah. Garrett Cole is the supposed ace of the team that has at times looked like a Hall of Famer and at times look like he should be the fourth or fifth pitcher in the rotation. If he can get hot and he can be an ace that can go toe to toe with Verlander, then the Yankees will have a shot in that aspect. And then in the bullpen, the Yankees are so screwed because they're like, when you think about it, they're without their four best relief pitchers in um, Ron Marinaccio, Scott Efros, Chad Green, and Michael King. And Araldis Chapman just decided to stop playing baseball and just then randomly Clay, just... and Clay Holmes also forgot how to forgot how to start playing baseball in, in a different way because he can't locate for jack shit. I don't know man um, next year next year our bullpen is gonna be really good with King coming back. Yeah if they're healthy. So it if Wandy Peralta and Clay Holmes can like go into Andrew Miller mode and pitch <laughs> like, yeah and pitch like 15 scoreless innings each 
If all of those things happen, the Yankees can win the World Series. If it's one of really them doesn't a simple happen, philosophy. I yeah, promise. we just need like five players to enter absolute God mode for the next like four weeks, and we got it. In the bag. In the bag. N- Nasty Nestor shoving tomorrow, though. That's that's for certain. Yeah, I mean, we really don't give Nestor like we don't pay homage because I mean, I was I saw this Boone interview. He was like, Nestor Cortez just looks like. You know, I can do something he can do. He can do something I can do. Yeah, That's not true. <laughs> he can do a lot of things better than I can do. Yeah. Yeah, N- Nestor – well, Nestor has been the most reliable pitcher all season. Definitely, and for sure. It's a good thing that Garrett Cole had a good start the other night because if not, I would have been pissed that it wasn't Nestor. No, but, um, y'all – I wish I would have seen Sam in our uh, Yankees group chat. Uh, he was like, okay. every time Cole would let up a hit, this dude – it's terrible. Yeah, we we can't repeat some of the things that were yeah, said. Yeah, we can't repeat stated. some of the things that um, were said. I, I like that we get my Kim job. Oh, was that oh, two? You got to be shit, man. The choke job. Choke. The choke job. Okay. I like that we're getting, you know, big Kimmies on here <laughs> Um, a little bit. So, Kimmy gets a shout out here. <laughs> I, I don't think we should be too. Yeah, he's, he's a beast. Um, but Don't, uh, don't about talk it. about beasts anymore, bro. <laughs> don't go the, the way I think you're gonna go. <laughs> yeah, I'll stop talking. I'll stop talking. Um are you are you thinking what I'm thinking? Yes, I'm thinking exactly. JD. Thinking. Yes. Um, okay. <laughs> okay. Um so that's that's about it. Um if you're tuning in on YouTube, thank you. Um uh, we're gonna be here whenever we feel like doing these. I can't honestly say that it's gonna be consistent, but it's gonna happen. It's gonna um, happen. Yeah, that, that's about it. Yeah. Thank you. If you stay the whole way, do the outro. Yep. Sam and CD. CD and Sam.